Grace, peace, and mercy from God our Father in Christ Jesus our Lord and Savior. You know, like always, every week, I always kind of think, where am I going to go with the text? How does God want me to apply it in this specific place? So I go and I study and I read and I read and I read. And then I start writing. And then sometimes what's written, I don't preach. That's what this morning is going to bring. So that means I've got to watch the clock. Otherwise, we might be here a while. Because I wasn't sure how I was going to connect the book of Ephesians with the gospel. I am the bread of life. You look at this text in Ephesians. Put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds and to put on the new self. It goes on after putting off falsehood. Speak the truth with your neighbor. Be angry and do not sin. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God and Christ forgave you. Be imitators of God as beloved children and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. How you doing? What does it sound like to you when you hear this? And, and then I ask, how you doing? How you doing with beca- being a good neighbor? How you doing with loving your... Ah, let's just put it this way. When we're loving the people that maybe aren't so lovable... How are you doing? One of these days I'm going to give you guys microphones. (laughs) Because this is what it's about. Our faith is real. It's not dead. It's real. We don't come here to go through the motion. We come here to receive what God has given us. And you're like, Pastor, but you're just throwing all this stuff that sounds like law at us. Yes. Yes, because when I put it the way I put it, it sounds like law, right? Do this, don't do that. How do we do this? How do we put off our old self? How do we be imitators of, as, to God, of God as his beloved children? How do we become imitators? How can we do that? Well, one thing I learned after 58 years, I can't. You can't. You can't do it. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. You will have everything you need. For your salvation. The Ephesian talk is sanctification. It's the after. That's why when we're out in the world and we run into these people, well, they might be just like us, Christians struggling in the world, and they might have fallen a little bit that day. Or they might 
be still in the darkness and not know Christ. And that's where we can show them the light of Christ because we have the bread of life. And we have no reason to hunger and no reason to thirst. Because the simple thing is, Jesus dying on the cross, he died for all. And I love this part in here. All that the Father gives me will come to me. What the Father gives, those that the Father gives will come. You look at some of the Israelites, you get the Pharisees, they didn't come. No, they just kept arguing. Some of them came later. Some some of them did come to faith later. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of the one who sent me. And this is his will. Plain as day. That I should lose nothing of all that he has given me. All that the Father has given Christ, he will not lose. So even in your worst day, you look at that Ephesian text and I'm like, I'm a little far from that. (laughs) You are a child of God. You are given to Jesus. And he will keep you and sustain you. You know, this, this text, people assume this text is talking about Holy Communion. Not yet. It's a little later. It's about Jesus about what he has done for us suffering and dying giving his life up for us and for those who do not know him because after all when Jesus died did you know him (laughs) that was a long time ago (laughs) No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. The Father will draw us to Christ. As we're out in this world, we might run into people that, yeah, they're not exactly the way we live. Maybe their language is a little, uh, I can't remember what the word is, but there's a, there's a word. Help me out, somebody. It's colorful. <laughs> there's another word for it, too, and I, I just can't remember what it is. I was at a funeral yesterday, not for a member, but for a friend of mine out in Immokalee. His wife had passed. And ran into a guy out there at the funeral who was a nephew, but she was like a mother to him. And he has struggles. He's had struggles. And as we're eating after the funeral, I said, you know, I I spoke to him before, and I said, you know, if you need anything, call. If you need to talk, call. And then I said to the other members of that church, you know, you are one of theirs, because he was a member. You are one of theirs. If you need something, ask. We all go through the struggles in life. Maybe not the same struggles. 
But Jesus has put us all on this earth with the same goal in mind. Because it's about our salvation. And it's really simple because God gives to his son. Works in us. Within the service. Within the word. Within a Bible study. Within your homes where you're reading the word of God. The fathers ate manna, they said. Okay? And they still died. But they didn't trust God. Remember the hoarding of the manna? Well, I'll save extra. And it just went bad. This, this text in John... It just gives us everything when we are weak because it is the Father's will for us all to be saved. It is a Father's will that we would come to faith in Jesus. It is not the Father's will that some will perish. And what does that say about God? We have a loving God that is full of mercy and full of grace. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the bread of life that came down from heaven to live among us to tabernacle, live with us. Send his Holy Spirit down to be with us. We have his word. And Christ is the incarnate word. I'm going to throw a little law on you. Be in this. Read it. Not to to make you feel bad, but that the things and the stories of God, you will see his graciousness. You will see his saving work of what he has done from Genesis on. He is our source. Of life. He is the bread of life. It's more about, it's more than communion. It's our daily life with Him. Walking in this world seven days a week. I should have added up how many hours there are in a week, but 24 hours a day with Him. And then we could do Ephesians. But it's only in Christ that we can be imitators of God. That we can even come close to doing those things because of what he has done for us. The bread of life. Amen.